Hey everyone, it's time for part two of our muzzle training video. We've had a little break from our YouTube posts, a well-deserved holiday if I may say myself, but um, we're coming back in to this video to follow up from part one, which was helping your dog to feel comfortable about putting their face in the muzzle, so just forming a nice positive association and a good feeling around the muzzle. And then we worked into the lure reward method, so lure reward, add the cue, fade your lure. Sweet. Hope that you've been practicing at home, you've had a nice bit of time to work through it. Hopefully maybe get your nice pretty muzzle from the muzzle movement. What we're going to look at in today's video is increasing the duration with which your dog has their face in the muzzle. And you know, when I talk about increasing duration, we mean like going from like saying yes and feeding the millisecond that face goes in to holding out for like a quarter of a second and half a second and three quarters of a second and then building up to like a second before you say yes and treat. So that'll be in the first little section of the video. But what I want you guys to look at more than the training itself, which is important, you know, you wouldn't want to get that all right. But I want you guys to look at how Gordo seems to feel about the training. The way that he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to put my face in that muzzle. Please can I put my face in the muzzle? And this is the thing. Muzzle training is so severely stigmatized because people often think that the dogs are going to hate the muzzle. And, you know, I think I might have said this in the first video that like, if I just took the muzzle first session to Gordo, put it on his face and strapped it up and just went, cop that, I think he would have hated it too. I would probably hate it if even, even with all the practice I have had with wearing a face mask in the pandemic, if you came up to me, even if it was a clean mask and you had clean hands and you just put the mask on my face without first asking my permission, I'd probably smack your hand away too. So I want you guys to watch this first part where we're just building some duration, quarter of a second, half a second, one second, maybe towards Gordo's face in the muzzle. And sorry, I should say in this part, you'll also notice that I've introduced the straps. But just the fact that before they were tucked away and folded right out of the way, now all I've done is fold them out into their natural position, but we're not touching them yet. We're just, they're just, they exist. Good boy. Got it? Muzzle. Yes. Muzzle. Yes. Gordo, muzzle. Yes. Touch. Yes. Pacha. Gordo. notice about the last round of videos of the you know the straps exist and building some duration is that I'm not always building duration in a linear fashion it's not like you know once we hit a quarter second we benchmark and only accept more than quarter seconds sometimes I'm rewarding him or reinforcing him if I want to say that correctly sometimes I'm reinforcing his behavior when it's immediate sometimes a quarter second sometimes a whole second so you kind of want to ping pong around that so that they're never quite sure how long it's going to be you're not building an expectation where you know you've built it so stringently that they go well three seconds has elapsed and now i haven't been rewarded and i'm gone we just want to make it kind of you know keep them guessing basically it's like a poker machine so um you might also notice that there are a couple of times where i was greedy and i held out for too long before marking and reinforcing gordo's behavior and gordo went well sub this and he pulled his face back. So again, that's on me for being too greedy. Um, you've got to watch that in yourself because if we're not increasing what we're asking for, we're never going to build the behavior. But if we're asking for too much too soon, well, it's all going to fall apart very quickly. So we use a Goldilocks analogy in dog training quite often. Not too much, not too little. You've got to try and keep it just right. 
So the next round of videos, you are going to see a bit of a jump in the training plan because I took two weeks off and Gordo's family are so amazing. They've been supporting the training plan as all good pet parents do with um, even with our tier three walk and train program. It's reasonable to say that I can only affect so much change in one hour once a week. Same with Nathan, same with Abby, even though we're fantastic trainers. So we have the support of the clients working on things in between the sessions. So for that reason, you'll see that Gordo's family have been working really beautifully on the introduction of the straps. Um, so what we're doing in this next round, our criteria is around Gordo puts his face in the muzzle and then I want to be able to I'm not necessarily do the straps up, but I just want to start to fart ass around with them and say that, you know, these also are a thing that exists. This is a thing that happens. It's not a big deal. This is the part of muzzle training where things can get a bit tricky with people, especially if you're expecting things to move in a linear fashion and an errorless training plan. You know, it's it's not always the case. You'll notice that Gordo and I have a couple of conversations, silent conversations, if I borrow a term from, I think it's Eileen Anson. Silent conversations where he puts his face in the muzzle on request and I go to introduce the straps and he goes, whoa, 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 I'm not fully prepared for this. So I withdraw. I don't take the muzzle all the way away and say, well, you don't get anything now. I just say, hey, if you don't like this, I'm not gonna do it, it's cool. You do have a choice. And you do have a voice in this training. Like, I'm not going to push you past your limit. And you'll notice, I think there's one really great repetition where I bring the straps up. He goes, whoa. I go, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, sir. And then he sort of goes, yeah, all right. And then he pops his face in. So again, watch for those little conversation moments. And again, I want you guys to not necessarily look for the perfect training because that's really not what this is. This is a little bit sloppy in my personal perfectionist opinion, but I want you to look for how Gordo feels again, or well, his body language indicating how he may feel internally, and then also the little conversations that we have between each other. So have a little look. Yes. Yes. Oh, he's good. Good boy, your friend. You go find it. That is absolutely looking fantastic, sir. So that's what we're up to. Um, remembering that with this muzzle training, we want to make sure when we start this kind of thing, we have the luxury of time. Um, you can see that a big part of it is giving the dog choices so that they can hopefully feel good about the choices we're asking them to make, but so they also feel empowered that if they want to say no, they can move away and say, I don't actually like that. I don't want to do that. 
And that's not bad. That's not a bad part of a training session. That's giving us really great information about where that learner is up to and where we're at with our training plan, what we might need to adjust. You might have noticed that in that last round of videos, once I started to introduce the straps really in earnest, I stopped feeding through the muzzle. Now, one excuse I'm going to make for myself is that trying to keep my mind on the camera filming, am I in shot, am I doing the training, it's, it's a lot for my little brain. Um, but also I think it was just a choice that I made during the session that it was the session was happening cleaner for this individual dog if I marked and then just fed directly into the mouth once I removed the muzzle. So we've got to remember that with dog training, there's, you know, the basic way that we'll do it, but then the way that we tailor things for an individual training plan is really, really important. So just because I've said, you know, do X, Y, and Z doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be the letter of the law for every dog in every situation or um, even the same dog on a different day. Um, so in the next video, what we're going to work on is moving towards really clipping the straps together and doing them up properly. Um, and then building some real genuine duration. So um, really looking forward to taking you guys through that. If you are interested in muzzle training your dog and you're looking to get a written training plan, send us an email at howlingsuccessdogtraining at gmail.com. We would be more than happy to provide you with a generic muzzle training plan free of charge. We also offer Zoom consultations, so it's online, available worldwide, and we would love to help you with your dog. So with that, we hope that your training has been a howling success. We had a really great time at the Dog Lovers Show with Monica's Doggy Rescue on the weekend, so we are all feeling a little bit weary and a little bit tired, but we're really keen to get back into some regular uploads for you all. Hope you have a fantastic week. Bye.